Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me. Zeros God Swords, welcome to the channel and welcome to another guide. In this guide, we're going to be taking a look at how I personally run through Zamorak at 300% in Rage. Now, you might be wondering why I run through at 300% instead of 400 or 500%, and that's simply because Zamorak right now doesn't have a right-click use custom in Rage feature, unlike both Telos and Art Glacor, so honestly, I find it just a bit easier to run through a 300% kill and not really worry about the kill being too difficult, and I can just press 7 on my keyboard and it automatically loads the enrage for me to get back into the dungeon. Now I also have to say that a lot of these rotations I have pulled pretty much straight from PVME, being that they have a 500% melee guide for Zamorak, and I've kind of changed a couple things here and there, but the main idea of like, you know, spamming D claws or maybe inserting a D long here or kind of the P7 rotation, a lot of these rotations that I've built up I have pulled from the PVME. I'll have that linked below, feel free to check it out. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this guide. Alrighty, so here's the worn equipment, the gear and preset and whatnot, and also the relics that I use for doing Zamorak. Holy Jesus! What is that? So in other videos where I've showcased something with a melee combat style, it should be no surprise to you that I absolutely despise using the whip in any capacity really, as well as Jaws of the Abyss, although I am more likely to bring that as a swap for a few different instances. Yes, the whip is best in slot for melee, however at Zamorak I do not include the whip switch or the helm switch, I just go straight vestments and langs, and that's just how I do the boss, it's a slight variance from the PVME method. However, I find it much more simple, and I'm hoping that, you know, at some point Melee gets some type of small or medium-sized rework to kind of fix all the different things with it. Being that its ultimate is based around burst damage and the special attacks to go in between Zerks are damage over time based. Hopefully some type of change or rework comes to the specs and how they work, but I digress, let's go ahead and get into the actual gear that I am using. So to start off the gear, let's go ahead and take a look at the food and other healing sources that I am using. As far as food is concerned, I just use blue blubbers with super ceridomin brews. I pretty much use the super version of Gothic's Rest and ceridomin brews ruse pretty much anywhere I go just for the extra healing benefit. Yes, they are more costly, however, I am not too bothered by the cost, being that the profit per hour at Zami is extremely high, and most other places for that matter. And when comboed with the expensive spices, that is the necklace below the Divine Spirit Shield, you can heal 2100 HP every two game ticks, at least until you activate the sixth rune, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And being that a blue blubber is three eats per inventory, inventory item and a brew is six eats per inventory slot uh, that gives you a nice two to one ratio so you can evenly match your blubbers to brew and just have a nice consistent food input now the two portents are also a healing item they are attuned portents of restoration i believe they are portents of restoration 10 and they just automatically heal 2300 hp once you go below half health now they do have a cooldown i believe it's somewhere like a 10 or 12 seconds or something like that so you can't just bring an inventory of them and spam them as some type of auto food. However, they are another healing source that doesn't drain adrenaline, and that is honestly the biggest thing in PVM, is being able to use food that does not drain adrenaline, so that way you can continue to kill the boss faster before it kills you, thus over time dealing less damage towards yourself. As far as weapons are concerned, like I said before, I just bring the Lang Swords, a physical easy K, my spear, and the Crystal Dagger is just a mobile swap. Now if you don't have a physical easy K, not to worry, it is just a glorified cleave switch, and you could put the spear in its place just fine, and you would pretty much notice no difference between kills. For prayer restoration, I do use Powder of Penance here, although I do bring a Blessed Flask just in case since I am using a Divine Spirit Shield. And for Adrenaline Gain, I just bring the standard Adrenaline Renewal Potion. As far as EOFs are concerned, the green EOF that I'm wearing has Dragon Claws in it, and the purple one in the inventory has a Dragon Longsword in it. Dragon Claws are going to be your main source of damage throughout most of the fight, and Dragon 
Dragonlong is very nice on the green HP bar, as Dragonlong Sword will always ignore hit cap regardless of what you're attacking. So while you're dealing with green bar, if you only have 30% adren left, you can just go ahead and give it a swipe and it will usually hit anywhere from 15 to 22k ish. Sometimes it hits low, sometimes it hits really high, it's just kind of random. But the fact that it can run through damage cap on the green HP bar is rather nice. Grim is there just for raising HP cap and crit chance, which is rather helpful since a lot of abilities here can hit very high and crit chance also means that you're going to hit higher as well. The armor I'm wearing is just full four-piece vestments and the perks on them are pretty much more or less standard. I believe in the fourth slot where you would have enhanced devoted, I have uh, genocidal, I think comboed with demon slayer or something like that. I don't really remember why I put it on there. I think demon slayer was for the uh, demon that you fight here. However, at anything below 500%, you absolutely do not need demon slayer on your gear. And if you want to run enhanced devoted, that is more than fine. But the rest of the perks such as, you know, impatient for devoted for, crackle for relent five, and biting four with some type of perk comboed onto it. I think on this set, I have biting for hoarding. I would not run mobile on my armor with melee. That is why I have a mobile switch with crystal dagger. And the reason for that is there are points in time when using melee where you absolutely want the barge adrenaline from using greater barge. And then there's other times where you can forego the adrenaline gain from barge and go for a mobile barge. However, having it on an offhand, like a cheap offhand, you could use enhanced Excalibur in this place or just any other cheap weapon that you have. It gives melee a lot more versatility and is my preferred method of dealing with that. As far as the weapons are concerned, this is just standard best in slot perks such as Aftershock 4 equal 2 on the offhand and Precise 6 Aftershock 1 on the main hand. And the same thing goes for my physical EZK, except it's Precise 6 Relent 1 instead of Precise 6 Aftershock 1. The spear, I'm pretty sure, just has Lunging 4 equal 2 and Precise 6 Aftershock 1 to get all of those big boy bleed hits out. Now I went ahead and just tossed in some armor spikes, uh, just kind of for funsies. You might as well bring them for the little bit of extra damage they can do. And the bleeds they provide can help out a little bit with Channeler's Ring. However, I personally bring Channeler's Ring more so for accuracy concerns over anything else. As with melee, I almost never run Berserk Aura here, I'm almost always on Majorat, so with other combat styles, I have noticed some accuracy problems using Reavers, although that was mostly range with Reavers and full arrows, so I guess that kind of makes sense. And if you are someone who likes to bring the whip, Channeler's Ring is going to be best in slot with the enchantment. However, honestly, it's kind of a toss up, just bring whichever one works for you and you happen to own. The hybrid cape is not required here. If you have just the standard melee Zuck cape, that is more than enough to do this boss. And the rune pouches have runes for Disrupt Shield, Venge, and I believe Borrowed Power for Smoke Cloud. The Vit Pot is there for Phase 7 to make life a little bit easier with the giant typeless attack. And I bring Divine Spirit Shield over T90. Honestly, it's not too big of an issue. You can pretty much bring either, but Divine is a nice backup for when things go a little bit sideways. As with Vestments being pretty much a glass cannon setup where it's all damage, no defense, uh, having the damage reduction that Divine can offer in the kind of oh snap situations is always nice to have. So honestly, I just bring Divine. I believe the perks on it are Lucky 6, Absorbative 1. Some people will go with Lucky 4, Absorbative 2, as both are kind of the same as far as overall damage reduction is concerned. Or if you really want to, you could put Turtling on your Divine. However, I don't use Barricade at all during this fight, so I just run that on my Spirit Shields. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and take a look at these relics. Conservation of energy is very nice for the various special attacks, uh, overpower and berserk adrenaline and whatnot. It makes getting rotations out a little bit easier, and overall is a highly recommended relic for melee in general. Berserker's Fury is just there to deal a bit more damage, as with most fights and how I play this game, I'm usually on about 7 to 10 HP anyways, so I might as well go for the extra heals, as 300% is not too painful and doesn't require something like Death Ward anyway. And since we don't have a lot of relic power left over, I just toss Font of Life in there. With melee, I would not go with Shadow's Grace as mentioned before. I have a mobile swap as for versatility on getting barge adrenaline, so I would just go with something like Font of Life. 
maybe with necromancy coming up we'll be able to get another 50 or so relic power and then maybe we could put blessing of hetan there for some additional healing on our food but we will have to see what the future holds oh and last but not least vuln bombs are kind of self-explanatory doing extra damage to the boss for tossing a bomb out which is lossless is absolutely worthwhile and you should bring vuln bombs pretty much just about anywhere i forgot to mention this in the armor portion but i am using the enhanced passage gloves uh with the enchantment on them Zami is not poisonable, so cinder banes are definitely worthwhile to just leave in the bank and just pull out the passage gloves for the better bleed damage. Anyways, I think that's enough rambling on about the gear. I think we covered all the bases there. Let's go ahead and get into an example kill. Alrighty, we have the preset loaded up and ready to go. Now, I want to go over a couple of important things. First off, the familiar I am using is a Hellhound familiar. It makes survival uh, quite a bit easier here, especially in a glass cannon armor setup and some important things to have bound to make life a little bit easier is just have Vitpot and Disruption Shield bound in an area where you can hit them quickly for P7 and I would also have Shard and Shatter bound somewhere as well as Debilitate. Now for Zami specifically I also just have uh, Reflect here just in case and Barricade just in case you know some really crazy stuff happens although 300% you shouldn't need Barricade uh, the only thing I might use is Immortality if I really screw up and get the uh, the special attack that sends you into Infernus with one of the runes overhead that you have to kind of match to teleport out that special attack. If you get that, you can't stun him as you go up with melee. That's about the only time I will use uh, Immortality, but we should be skipping all the special attacks anyway unless we just get super unlucky. Also, as far as Aura is concerned, I pretty much only use Majrat Aura, so... Go ahead and activate that, and let's just go ahead and get into a kill. Alrighty, so we'll just go ahead and get started with a kill. So we'll go ahead and enter, discard progress, enrage mode, 300%, surge over, right click teleport, option 2. And then for these mages, I just kill them uh, kind of left to right. And here I just kind of use some basic abilities on these first few. Basic, another basic. Now here I will go ahead and hit Meteor Strike on this witch. Let it release, hit another basic. Bladed Dive over to this one. Use some weak abilities to build up some adrenaline. Now running over here I'll go ahead and Lang Spec. Use a couple basics. And surge over to this tile over here. I'm going to go ahead and divert just to get the extra adrenaline. Zerg with a pot. Target cycle barge. Chaos roar. Overpower. And then bleed flurry. And hit a basic. D claw. D long. And then a couple more D claws. And he's phased. Now here we're just going to get him down to about 40k. Go ahead and use destroy. A couple more basics and we got him there. Now before I go in I like to use my spear and toss a dismember. Anticipate as I'm going up. Surge and barge. Bleed flurry and use basics. Now when I do the surge and whatnot here I am equipping my mobile. I do a mobile barge here just so I have it for later. And I bleed Flurry here and on the boss to try and get Zerk off cooldown quicker. And then Surge Bladed Dive over here. Also, I should mention the pad order I am doing is 421653. But I'll stand on this tile. Zerk, Barge, Double Basic. And then go ahead and hit Greater Flurry. D Claw into a D Long Spec. Get a 22k there, it was nice. Double D Claw. Now here what I'll do is Chaos War. Overpower, and that should hit double 32k. Hit with a bleed, and then teleport up. As you're teleporting up, you can hit an ability at any time. And just Surge and Barge, bleed another Flurry, and just kill this Witch with some basics. And if you anticipate as you're teleporting up, and then wait for global cooldown, and then Surge... That will give you the two global cooldown, cooldowns required to then uh, get a barge off. So, kind of works out nicely there. 
And it's kind of a rinse and repeat here where you barge double basic and bleed flurry. The higher enrages, you would probably want to bleed assault instead. But just go ahead and declaw, hit a D long, another couple D claws. Basic, another basic. And here we're not going to have Chaos War available, so we'll just overpower and hurricane. Maybe eat a little bit, toss a dismember, and go out. Now, the reason I toss a dismember there is um, if you have a bleed going on Zamorak, the heals that will be he will be doing will be uh, lessened because on that tick that he is taking bleed damage, he cannot have a healing tick or a, like a healing hit out. So that's the reason you bleed. If you look at some of the really high end rage ones, basically the base tank will just. Uh, Spam bleeds to try and hold him at a HP instead of letting him heal up to full. So it's just something nifty to kind of do. And here, I like to stand on this tile. Zerk. Barge. Gonna rinse repeat. Double basic and bleed flurry. Maybe hit a basic here to get up a little adrenaline. Didn't have enough for D-Long there, so I'll just hope for D-Claws to come through. And they did. Another couple basics here. I'll go ahead and Chaos Roar into an Overpower. Also dismember and go ahead and teleport in. Put my mobile, hit Barge. Surge, then Barge. Lead the Flurry. Now what you can do here if you want is you can go ahead and Freedom Auto. So Freedom, Main and Two Hand Equip. It helps get a little bit extra Adrenaline if you need to pull up a little bit is to Freedom Auto. Surge Blade to Dive over to this tile here. Go ahead and get a res off. Zerk. Barge. And repeat. Double basic into a bleed flurry. Get another basic. Now this pad you have to run off so you don't get stunned by the little trap there. Do a D-claw into a D-long. Another D-claw with the Adren refund. Here I'm going to go ahead and Chaos War over power. I'll just go ahead and re-overload. Anticipate. Surge. And barge. Bleed flurry and just build up adrenaline. Go ahead and some freedom autos here. Eat up as necessary. Toss another bleed. Now on 300% you can get away without shard shatter. Uh, if you forget to, it's not the end of the world. You just basically, in the Zerk on P7, are going to either do Hurricane or Shard Shatter. Kind of an either-or. We're going to run off the circle here so the trap doesn't get us. Double D-Claw and go ahead for an Overpower into a Hurricane. That finished him. Now you can click your Melee Prayer here, and then as soon as you see it swap over on your character... Go ahead and anticipate. It didn't go because my ability bar was unlocked and I dragged it accidentally. But just mobile barge on the demon, bleed flurry. And you can click over to Zami to build up a little more adrenaline. And you link spec, barge, bleed destroy. We actually got lucky here with the rune. And then do basic, zerk. And then just do more basics to build up adrenaline. And here what I like to do is Devotion, Anticipate, Surge, and then Barge, Lead Assault, Vitpot with Disrupt Shield, Overpower, Hurricane, Declaw, and he's pretty much dead. So if you are Shard Shattering instead of Hurricane, you can go ahead and press Shard after the Overpower, and that's how it works. Uh, sometimes you will get slightly unlucky, and after the Declaw, I will go ahead and swipe a D-Long if he's not already dead. Or if he has a lot of HP and you don't want to risk it with a D-Long, you could easily hit Destroy under Limitless, and that should finish him off. But that's pretty much a melee Zami kill, more or less, so we'll go ahead and see what the loot is. Nothing special per usual, but you know, 7 mil for uh, 6 minutes worth of work, not too bad. The commons here are pretty strong, especially since they're almost all alkables, so definitely a good boss to farm out. Plus, with some bad luck mitigation, rares are actually pretty common here, especially farming 300%, so uh, the GP per hour is pretty dang high, I must say. So, 
Hope this guide helped. Uh, happy hunting at Zami. Get them bow pieces. And let's go ahead and roll that outro. Actually, there are some final notes that I wanted to make here. Uh, again, the pad order I use is 4, 2, 1, 6, 5, 3. So how that works is uh, the east circle is considered circle 1. And then it just goes around the room to 6 here. So I start on this one. The minions, again, like I said before, I kill them in this order till I get to four. And then just to make it a little bit easier for melee sake, I will meteor with a basic on this one. And then bladed dive over to this minion over here. And then um, kill this one last so I have time to get over to this tile. And then start the fight. Now as far as P7 is concerned, uh, I, pr I will always bleed flurry on the demon. And then just basic ability to build up more adrenaline. Uh, if you have the D demon slayer sigil, go ahead and use that. But if not, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. And as far as doing the rune order, um, I always mobile barge the first rune in Bleed Destroy. And as I'm hitting Bleed Destroy, I am hitting a pot just to help out with the Dren management. And I used to use G Fury as my second ability, but I swapped over to using Decimate because I needed it. Because when I would use G Fury, there were a few times where the rune would be alive on like three or 400 HP. But the important note to having a successful rune kill on rune 1 for phase 7 is to get your zerk off just after that basic like immediately get zerk and then surge over to the next room now in the example kill we got back to back runes so it wasn't quite an issue i could just stay there but what i'll do is i will surge over to the other rune whichever one it happens to be or bladed dive, it honestly doesn't matter which movement ability you use, and then stall a basic while you're running over to get into melee distance of the second rune. So all you're doing is just clicking attack and then hitting a basic ability, and then that will stall, and then as soon as your character gets within melee distance, it will release that ability, and then you can hit a second one. And then after the second rune is dead from basic abilities, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Devotion will block the big melee hit, and then Anticipate is enough to help out with a little bit of extra, to help out with some uh, damage reduction on the typeless hit, as well as spacing out enough time for you to get a barge and then bleed assault. Now, if you do end up shard shattering, for phase 7, I would put shatter after the overpower, so I would bleed assault, overpower, shatter, and then just go ahead for a dragon claw EOF, and then I would go ahead for a D long afterwards. Usually the D claw will pretty much kill it, as the other abilities are massive amounts of damage. However, if it's not dead, go ahead and swipe a D long, or if for some reason you min hit everything, then you can go ahead and use something like Destroy. But other than that, that is pretty much how I do Zamorak. So if you want to see some more example kills, uh, you can go into the VODs on my Twitch channel. I usually do Melee Zam over there, so feel free to stop by if I'm live. Or you can go ahead and look through the VODs for more example runs and whatnot, as well as checking out the PVME for a written guide on the 500% kills, as that is where this method and some of these rotations were largely influenced from. But anyways, I just wanted to talk a little bit about those extra things, because I don't think I explained it well enough during the example, so now we can go ahead and roll that outro. Ladies. Gentlemen, and I did not forget about you, Zeros God Swords. Thank you very much for watching. Your viewership is greatly appreciated as always. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time for the next guide. Peace.